everybody. My name is Michael Doherty and I teach the Art of the Airbrush workshop here. It's a fairly new workshop, so you want to make sure you check out the website for the scheduled dates and times. I'm also the owner of Anything Airbrush Plus, which is the Tri-State's only full-service airbrush studio. And we're going on 30 years of business here in Cincinnati. Um, now, while the airbrush has been around for over 150 years, it's still that one art medium that gets overlooked. Even though, as it said in the introduction, it is the most versatile art medium ever. With its ability to paint on any surface and in the right hands, paint anything on any surface, it is still amazing how few artists have ever picked up an airbrush, ever learned how to use an airbrush, and are even remotely aware of the many diverse applications of the airbrush. Uh, if you think about oils and watercolor and acrylics and pastels and colored pencils, none of them have the ability to work on any surface. The airbrush can. Uh, at the end of this video, I'm gonna pop up some, some examples of the versatility that I'm talking about. I also encourage you to visit our website, anythingairbrush.com, um, to see even more of the examples of the, the, the versatility of some of the projects and whatnot that we have worked on over the years. In this video, I'm going to do a, a quick little demonstration to show you the, the, how the airbrush works. Um, probably the two most popular things that people think of when they hear the word airbrush are t-shirts or automotive. So t-shirts, meaning like the shirts that you see in most of your vacation spots, amusement parks and uh, you know, Florida and uh, Gallenberg, Myrtle Beach, whatnot, and then automotive, motorcycle tanks, uh, truck tailgates, tire covers, helmets, those kind of things. Probably those are probably the two categories that are most out in the public eye, which is why that's what people think of when they hear the word airbrush. Uh, today, I'm going to do a quick little demonstration of a beach scene, typical beach scene that you would see on one of those shirts that I'm talking about from, from Florida or Myrtle Beach or whatnot. Um, not only because it's a cute little design, but it's funny because the, the beach scene incorporates every technique that you would need to learn in order to master the art of the airbrush. Um, so we're going to do a quick little demonstration here. Now, as far as what we're using, I'm going to pop up at the end also what we're actually using as far as materials. Uh, the first thing that we I'll show you is we are using a double action airbrush. This is the Pache brand. The, the model is a VL, so it's a Pache VL. Um, it's a double action airbrush. This is basically what it usually looks like. Um, most airbrush artists use their airbrushes without the back on it, simply because they do have a tendency to clog. So having access to this needle helps to clean out the clog. So the quicker you can do that, the better. So most of our artists work without the, without the back on it. So the airbrush, like I said, this is a double action airbrush, which means both actions, paint and air, are controlled by this little finger leader here. Push down for air, pull back for paint. Okay, so the, fur, the further you pull back is going to release more paint. So push down for air, pull back for paint. To get really close, and pull back just a teeny little bit, that's what gives us our fine line. If I release a little bit more paint, that's what gives us a, a wide spray. So the, the thickness of your line is controlled by how close you are to the surface and how much paint you're releasing um, and how far, further away you pull back from the surface. Okay. The other thing that we're using is the paint-wise is, is uh, an acrylic base paint. This is Createx. It's an airbrush paint which means it's already thinned down, ready to go through the airbrush. Um, it's an acrylic paint, like I said, which means you can use any of your favorite acrylics, Liquitex or whatnot. Um, you just need to be able to thin it down to like basically the consistency of milk. So any medium that you can thin down to the consistency of milk can go through an airbrush. The one key thing to keep in mind, however, is whatever you would normally use to clean that medium also has to be able to thin down and go through the airbrush. Uh, so it's not just a matter of being able to put the material through it, but it's also being able to put your cleaner through it. Um, so we have the airbrush and we have the paint that we're using. Um, the uh, compressor that we're using is a, a cobalt, and I'll flash up a picture of the yeah, exact compressor that we're using at the end of this also. Um, now, the one last thing I want to point out real quickly is that these, this airbrush 
all of our air rushers have a quick disconnect on it, okay, which allows me to use just one hose and plug in and unplug and plug in and unplug each of the colors that I need at any given time. We use a palette of 15 colors, okay, 15 different air brushes, so it's a lot easier having just one hose instead of having a tangled mess of hoses, one for each, one for each airbrush. Um, this is not necessary. 15 different airbrushes or more are not necessary. One airbrush is, is just fine. Just learning the techniques on how to, to use light to dark, things like that, will help the process go faster. We use 15 different brushes because we're using, doing mass quantities of things at any given time. So it's a lot easier, a lot faster to be able to have one um, airbrush for every color, okay? So, like I said, the demonstration, I'm going to give you a quick little example of a beach scene, typical beach scene. So I'm going to start with my, my blue. And you can see I'm a good 8, 12 inches away spraying the blue in a circle. Okay? And it's a beach scene, so we've got sky and we've got, we got water, okay? So I want to put in a little horizon line, so I'm just going to use this. This is a, a just a piece of clear acetate that we use for a straight edge, and it's going to spray the end there that gives us our horizon line so we have our sky and we have our water here so the water is kind of rushing up on the shore so just indicating the water kind of rushing up on the shore and then the sky we're going to want a um a little sun in in the picture so I'm going to use this, this bottom of this can, hold it up there, and spray my paint. Okay. And I'm going to use my yellow. And I'm going to bring down my blue just a little bit further. Then I'm going to go to my purple and start the color up at the top. Right. And I'm going to get some little details into the sky and clouds. Okay, right. I'm going to throw a little bit of green. Just Now one thing I forgot to, to tell you is I am just practicing doing this demonstration on a, just your basic paper towel. So anybody who has an airbrush and wants to get it out and, and practice, paper towels, most economical thing to, to, to practice on. Alright, and the last thing I want to show you in this little beach scene here is the palm tree. Now this palm tree that you see on all the typical beach scenes and all the typical vacation spots. This is the hardest thing to learn in airbrushing, but it, it incorporates the two basic strokes that you'll learn in the class, the dagger stroke and the rat tail stroke. Everything I've already done here so far has been done with a dagger stroke and a rat tail stroke. Okay, This will just show you a little bit more up close and personal, but it is the hardest thing to learn. And once you master a palm tree, you've learned how to use an airbrush. Okay? So we start with, that's a dagger stroke, it's kind of a straight, either vertical or horizontal kind of a line. Rat tail is curved, right? Each of the palm leaves are made up the, the rat tail stroke.
Again, we can even put a little, a little island in the background. Little palm trees. And there you have your basic beach scene, okay? Again, everything that I took to do this palm tree is actually incorporated in the rest of the beach scene itself. This will take you a lot of practice and you need to get to, to, to master the art of the airbrush. Um, the one last thing, which I always like joke about, that goes into a beach scene is obviously a person's name. This is one of the hardest things to, to, to do these days, simply because Harlot didn't really use his cursor writing anymore. Course of writing, something that you need to learn how to practice if you're going to start learning how to use an airbrush. Um, so there you have it, people. Basic beach scene, basic techniques of what you actually learn in the, the art of the airbrush course. So uh, check out the website. Make sure you, um, you check out the schedule. Uh, check out our website, anything airbrush, uh, anythingairbrush.com, to see, like I said, the versatility. All the information I talked about will be at the end of this video. I appreciate you guys watching. Enjoy your day. Thanks.